I want to thank you for the opportunity to offer testimony on the issue of NCAA athletes' rights, particularly those pertaining to name, image, and likeness monetization. Today, I'm representing the Mideastern Athletic Conference as the chair of the MEAC's presidents and chancellors, but I'm also here as the parent of a 16-year-old who will be 17 on Saturday, is a soccer player, and is being actively recruited by over a dozen universities, other than mine, I might add. I'm also representing my own institution, Howard University, which is the only historically black college and university to win a Division I NCAA championship, uh, and that was in the sport of soccer in the 1970s, as well as the more than 100 historically black colleges and universities throughout the country. I'm a practicing surgeon and also uh, served as the manager of that NCAA Division I team that won, uh, that had a history of winning that championship. In our institutions, academics and athletics are each critical components of the education we provide. In the classroom and on the volleyball court, we teach our students the importance of transcendence and perseverance in overcoming any barrier they may encounter. But we also teach them to become their own self-advocates and to insist on fairness and equity. This is a balance we should seek to strike in college athletics, both on and off the court. I'm here today to express the MEAC's support for legislation that allows collegiate athletes to receive compensation for use of their name, image, and likeness. We believe that student athletes should be able to retain agents and professional representatives who can help them maximize earnings as well as handle certification and ensure compliance with regulations. In addition, we also support legislation that would protect students who face sports-related injury and medical expenses from incurring undue financial burdens. Student athletes put tremendous effort and dedication into their athletic activities, and they deserve to be compensated for those endeavors and protected in the course of pursuing them. However, it is critical we recognize that college athletics is not purely or principally a money-making venture, and it is neither in the best interest of the students or the institutions for it to be so. Sports in the landscape of higher education is indeed a part of a student's education. Even as we work to provide student athletes with greater rights to earn compensation, we should also seek to protect the amateur status of these sports. At the MIAC, our enthusiasm for increasing the rights of student athletes is tempered by our concerns for lesser resourced institutions. Many smaller schools simply don't have the funds to take on additional financial responsibilities. If they were required to pay for additional student athlete medical expenses or field more staff to ensure compliance with rules and regulations around student athlete compensation, the resulting strain would inevitably force them to downsize or eliminate certain athletic offerings entirely. We desperately need federal legislation that would supersede the patchwork of laws that exist on a state level and we need comprehensive laws that apply equally to student athletes across the country, while also recognizing and accounting for the diversity across collegiate athletic programs. As a representative of the MIAC and HBCUs, I have concerns about many of the proposals that would create tremendous burdens on smaller colleges and universities, particularly those historically black institutions that do not have the same resources as some of our wealthier and more privileged peers. And I take this opportunity to remind you that Howard University is the only historically black college and university where a five-star athlete has decided to enroll, as did McCurr Maker this past year. It is important to recognize that out of 1,100 college athletic programs in the NCAA, only 25 programs, some 2.27%, are profitable. The overwhelming majority of colleges and universities extend significant institutional resources to support athletics. For example, each year, Howard University expends approximately some $14 million to support our sports teams. If new rules and regulations only add to the cost that we assume without providing us with any additional assistance, we will not be able to sustain the athletic programs we currently have. And we offer some 21 Division I sports at present. We have the only swimming team at a historically black college and university. And that's just not about swimming, but it's about the African-American experience in this country. African Americans are five times more likely to drown, for example. So our swim team has athletes that will compete, hopefully at the Olympics, but we also have athletes who are interested in spreading uh, the learning of swimming throughout the African American community. 
This would be a tremendous loss to our institution as well as to the students whose opportunities for academic and athletic educational experience would be limited as a result. So it is with tremendous conviction that we at the MIAC advocate for expanding student rights to earn compensation and receive much needed protections for their well-being. However, we strongly believe that guardrails must be established that would protect smaller colleges and universities as well as the student athletes who are not well positioned to earn compensation from their athletic pursuits or who play smaller sports that could be eliminated if the institutions lack the wherewithal to support them. And to piggyback on, on Senator Booker's uh, presentation, the African-American athlete that he described, 56% chance of graduating at Howard University, that's at 80%. So those resources we do expend, we are very happy to expend those resources. While we recognize the complexity of these issues, we also believe that there are compromises to be had that would appeal to all parties with a vested interest in potential legislative solutions. Howard has the only swim team at a historically black college and university. Um, we have other minor sports that we will not be able to maintain um, if it becomes unequal, and especially in terms of recruiting, because as we talk about revenue, the television revenue that we generate is minuscule compared to these Which will sports. diminish the opportunities for all athletes, black, white, women, male, female. It just, it, it, there's a consequence here more than just how we, uh, how we effectuate taking care of those athletes that can earn revenue based upon their name, image, and likeness. The, 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 that's exactly right, because those athletes, if they would, um, you know, that NIL, they will gravitate to certain areas. I know there's a discussion about other talents outside of athletics, but the reality is the bulk of where they will gravitate will be to the Power Five and the bigger schools where they, there's a media market. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Senator Schatz. 